Innocent was born into a very poor family in the year 1797 in a small village in Siberia. He lost his father when he was only six years old. His uncle was a deacon and helped raise him. His uncle was also a mechanic, an excellent watchmaker, and taught St. Innocent about his work. When he was about 10 years old, St. Innocent was enrolled in a seminary. After graduating at the top of his class, St. Innocent married the beautiful Catherine, the daughter of a local priest. And soon after their wedding, St. Innocent was ordained a deacon and then a priest and was given the responsibility of serving at a parish in Russia. The parishioners loved their young priest and St. Innocent and his family were very happy there. They were content with their quiet, simple parish life. Around this time, St. Innocent's bishop was looking for priests to serve as missionaries to the Native Americans in Alaska, but St. Innocent did not want to go to Alaska. He had heard about the dangers and hardships missionaries had to endure there. However, one day, a visitor came to St. Innocent's parish. The man told exciting tales about the 40 years he spent living among the Aleuts in Alaska. St. Innocent enjoyed listening to his adventures immensely, but the saint still couldn't be persuaded to leave his homeland and journey to the Wild West. Little did he know that Christ had other plans for his future. While St. Innocent was waiting to meet with his bishop, the visitor from Alaska entered the room to say goodbye to the saint before he returned to his home in Alaska. As usual, the man started talking about his love for Alaska. Even though St. Innocent had heard these stories a hundred times before, when the man started to describe the Aleut's zeal in prayer and their eagerness in hearing the word of God, the saint was suddenly seized with a burning desire to go to America. He couldn't wait to tell the bishop of his wish. He felt like he was going to explode from excitement. When the bishop finally arrived, he was absolutely shocked at the saint's sudden change of heart. St. Innocent's adventures were about to begin. When he was only 26 years old, St. Innocent, his faithful, courageous wife Catherine, and their children began their difficult journey to the majestic land of Alaska. It took them 14 months before they finally arrived in America. There weren't many Orthodox priests in Alaska at this time, which is why St. Innocent was given the responsibility to tend to the spiritual needs of 2,000 Orthodox Christians. This was a very challenging task because all of these people were spread across more than 60 islands, and many of these places were isolated, unexplored lands. It was sometimes necessary for St. Innocent to travel long distances on foot and by dog sled, pulled by reindeer to get to the various villages where the Christians lived. He also had to travel to these islands in a small kayak, battling the stormy Gulf of Alaska. When St. Innocent traveled to one of these islands for the first time, he was surprised to find all of his people dressed in their best clothes, standing on the shore, waiting for him. When he asked why there were so many people there and how all of them knew he was coming, he was told that the leader of the tribe had received a vision and was told by two angels that the saint would be arriving to the island that day. St. Innocent respected the native culture and strongly believed that it was extremely important for missionaries to learn the culture and languages of the people they were preaching to. This was an important lesson he taught to St. Nikolai of Japan, another great Orthodox missionary whom St. Innocent mentored. St. Innocent's advice to St. Nikolai to learn the Japanese language and culture helped St. Nikolai convert thousands of people to the Orthodox faith. Among St. Innocent's many talents, he had a special gift for learning languages. Although he was extremely busy traveling and caring for his flock and family, he still worked extremely hard throughout the years to learn the various dialects of the Native American tribes in Alaska, which was no easy task. However, he took up the challenge, and in order to help Orthodox Christian natives learn more about the faith and help convert more natives, he translated the Bible, numerous liturgical texts, prayers, and many other important writings of the church into the languages of many of the natives in Alaska as well as Russia. One morning in the summer of 1859, news spread around the town that the new service books that St. Innocent had translated into the language of the Yakut people were going to be used for the first time during the liturgy at the cathedral. Throughout the long service, the Yakut people listened attentively to every word. They were so moved by the prayers that some of them began weeping and many kneeled spontaneously. It was the first time they had heard their native language in church. 
After the liturgy, the people gathered around St. Innocent to express their joy and thanks. Among that group was a Russian man who was born in Russia but raised in the region and knew the Yakut language well. He also expressed his amazement at what he had heard in church. He had always heard the services read in Slavonic his whole life, but he never understood the meaning of the prayers until that day. Although St. Innocent's flock was in Alaska, he also traveled south to Northern California. There was a lack of Orthodox clergy in California, and St. Innocent was sent to help the Orthodox faithful there. He visited San Francisco and Fort Ross, a Russian settlement on the coast. There was a small wooden chapel in the fort. The people had been waiting for a priest for years. Soon after St. Innocent entered the fort, he realized that there was a lot of work that needed to be done. He heard many confessions, baptized and married numerous Russians and Aleuts who had been looking forward for a very long time for a priest to finally arrive. His visit to California made it clear that the number of Orthodox Christians in America was now growing larger and larger, and more clergymen were greatly needed. St. Innocent was an extremely talented man and often used his talents to help serve the church. He was an excellent teacher and established many schools throughout his life. He taught the native Alaskans how to read and write and founded the first Orthodox theological seminary in North America, which helped instruct native priests in Alaska. St. Innocent was an expert at making clocks and organs, talents he used to help support his family. He also loved woodworking, carpentry, and architecture. He often worked alongside the native Alaskans as he taught them how to build their churches. As he journeyed across the unexplored lands of Alaska, he documented many of his observations, which were published in scientific journals, and captured the attention of many curious people back home in Russia. Even though he had many talents, St. Innocent was a humble worker, a man of genuine simplicity, and a great man of prayer. St. Innocent and his wife had 10 children, but three of them passed away as infants. He was a loving husband and father. The saint would always try to include his children in the various tasks and projects he was involved with. He enjoyed telling them stories, playing ball, and going on walks with them. He taught his children about mathematics, science, and nature, and taught them how to use their hands to build things. St. Innocent also taught them about the Orthodox faith and about the importance of always putting Christ at the center of their lives. In 1839, St. Innocent and his family left Alaska and returned to Russia. He journeyed to Moscow alone to report on all his missionary activities and to get various articles he wrote published. But while he was in Moscow, he received the tragic news that his beloved wife Catherine had died. The mother of his children, his loving wife, and faithful companion during his many adventures throughout the years was gone. Saint Innocent was absolutely devastated. Saint Philaret, the Metropolitan of Moscow and a good friend of Saint Innocent, urged the newly widowed saint to become a monk so he could be made a bishop. At first, Saint Innocent refused. He was concerned about the welfare of his children and feared that the monastic life would curtail his missionary endeavors. However, Saint Philaret went to the Tsar of Russia, who helped arrange that all of Saint Innocent's children would be placed in the best schools in Moscow and would be given guardians. This helped comfort the saint, who felt that his children would be well cared for if he decided to enter the monastic life. After much prayer, St. Innocent submitted his request to become a monk on the first anniversary of his wife's death. Two days later, he was tonsured. Two weeks after this, he was made the bishop of the Diocese of North America and Kamachka. As a new bishop, he traveled even more than he had as a priest. He once traveled 4,000 miles in 126 days. On land, by foot, St. Innocent experienced many temptations during his travels. The lack of food, water, rest, foul weather, and hostile natives who threatened and insulted the saint were hardships that the saint had to endure. But St. Innocent viewed these things as blessings from God who rewards those who patiently endure trials on earth with treasures in heaven. On one of St. Innocent's journeys, he was on a boat that was sailing towards Spruce Island when he was caught in a powerful, terrifying storm. All who were on board knew that they were in danger of losing their lives. As the winds and waves violently tossed the boat to the right and to the left, St. Innocent remembered hearing the story of a holy missionary monk who had worked many miracles in Alaska. This monk was St. Herman of Alaska. St. Innocent decided to pray to St. Herman 
and ask for the storm to calm down and that the lives of those aboard would be spared. Soon after St. Innocent asked for St. Herman's help, the winds changed and the storm came to an end. The saint and the crew were able to arrive safely to Spruce Island. Relieved and grateful, St. Innocent immediately served a memorial service on St. Herman's grave. Another time, St. Innocent was made aware that the British were not on the best terms with the Russians in Alaska. And unfortunately, British soldiers had recently been to the village where the saint had just arrived and had terrorized the villagers there. St. Innocent was previously warned not to go to the village, but he knew that there was a great need to minister to the faithful there and insisted on making the journey. When St. Innocent was conducting a service in the church, armed British soldiers unexpectedly appeared in the harbor. They learned that a Russian bishop was in town and decided to burst into the church. They saw St. Innocent praying on his knees. Despite all of the commotion, the saint didn't pause or even turn around. Instead, he continued reading the prayers in a clear, loud voice. The soldiers were a little confused at how calm and undisturbed he was and stood quietly in the church until the end of the service. When the service ended, the British soldiers told the saint that they were going to make him their prisoner. He told the soldiers that he was of no use to them and that it would be their loss if they arrested him because they would be stuck with the task of having to feed him. Instead of becoming their prisoner, he invited them to tea. They all got along splendidly and talked for hours. Not only was St. Innocent able to escape becoming a prisoner, but he was also able to convince the British commander to release an Orthodox priest whom they had taken prisoner on a nearby island. In 1868, St. Innocent's friend and mentor, St. Philaret of Moscow, passed away. Despite his declining health and request to retire, St. Innocent was made the new Metropolitan of Moscow. The Orthodox in Moscow grew to love their new Metropolitan. However, the saint was growing older, which made completing the many tasks of a Metropolitan incredibly difficult. He suffered from cataracts, an eye condition which eventually led to the saint losing his vision. Despite this hardship, he surrendered himself, as always, to the will of God. But being blind did not prevent St. Innocent from being very active. Even though he was blind, he still served divine liturgy from memory. He also undertook many projects as the Metropolitan of Moscow, including creating the Russian Orthodox Mission Society. During the society's existence, hundreds of missionaries were sent and supported throughout the Russian Empire, Alaska, Japan, China, and Korea. In 1879, only a few moments before the Paschal Liturgy, St. Innocent fell asleep in the Lord at the age of 82. St. Innocent was prepared to live the life of a simple parish priest, but Christ had other plans for his ministry. St. Innocent baptized 10,000 people during his lifetime. His influence extended from Russia to Alaska, California, and across the continent of Asia. Although his earthly life came to an end over 100 years ago, the saint continues to touch the lives of people around the world, even to this day. St. Innocent's life was full of joys and sorrows of unexpected twists and turns. The Lord guides a man safely in the way he should go. Psalm 37, 23 was one of St. Innocent's favorite verses. The saint once wrote, May my own example serve as proof of the truth that the Lord guides a man safely in the way he should go, and that each of us, servants of his church, is no more than an instrument in his hands.